Well, the bond is really a long-term investment um, in our children and in our community. So this is obviously for the school, um, but for the greater community, when you invest in your schools, um, that shows that your community is growing and it values education. And really, anytime you invest in education, that's one of the smartest long-term investments you can make. So our children are 21st century learners and, and they need and require you know, uh, up-to-date modern facilities, and at the heart of that is technology. Over virtual, my brother got one, but I, my brother got a gray one, and he had to return it back to the school, but we, but I didn't, I just had to go on my home computer. Right now in the pandemic, uh, when we go to a virtual learning setting, not every kid in every home has relative connectivity, reliable connectivity, some, some families don't have devices. The bond proposal gives a one-on-one -on -one device to all students, which we currently do not have. It also sets up computer labs for them in a larger scale than we currently have, so they'd have access to different technology, um, and we'd be more prepared. This community's been awesome, but I think it would build a bigger sense of community if we were in one area because uh, we could build off, like I said, the collaboration. Uh, the students would see each other and have familiarity with who they're going to have next year and the year after. I think having all three of my kids on the same campus will be wonderful. It, will, it won't be so scary to transition from one building to the another. I'm excited about having all of the elementary students in one building um, because as a STEAM teacher, I am working with the science standards. So second graders and fourth graders, for example, both work on rock layers, and I would love to be able to have them partner and do some mentoring work, um, maybe tackling some challenges together. And right now we can't do that because we have to arrange busing and um, schedules and things of that sort. Currently, a friend of ours who has a daughter in a wheelchair has to use a portable ramp to get her into the school building. And we know that when we create the schools to be completely ADA compliant, they won't have to deal with that anymore. And we are so grateful they can attend in-person education, but we want to make sure it's as comfortable as possible. We need to do some improvements here. Um, and I think that's just good for your community at large when, you know, all of your uh, citizens and community members can access your facilities and feel that um, they're a priority, you know, that it was built and uh, with the understanding that they should have access to it, which they should. I'm very proud of our district in so many ways. We have We've been able to provide our students with experiences um, that a small district wouldn't typically be able to, to offer. You want them to walk into a school um, where they have a sense of pride of like, I'm a priority. You know, look, look what the community has provided for me. I'm important. And, and that's important. We're going to have a new gymnasium to practice in because it's been pretty hard to get practices in. Usually my practices are pretty late at night. You're, it starts at the top, your varsity, and then works its way down. So a lot of times our younger kids get late practices and it's hard. I sort of want a bigger gym. We do jogging and our laps are sort of short. So I want our laps to get bigger so we can have more exercise. We have a small elementary gym that also doubles as the cafeteria. So scheduling wise, I can't schedule anything in the gym if it's lunchtime you know, or breakfast time. You can't uh, schedule something right after breakfast until we get the gym cleaned out. I'm so excited and not only physical education, not only my job, but my after school activities that I'm involved in. Um, a new gymnasium is going to open up so much more um, so much more availability for teams, for extracurricular activities, 
for all different types of community members to become acti actively involved in their students' education. We're going to have some improvements um, in the cafeteria. That's, that's our major performance space, besides the space where students eat lunch. Um, that's where our musicals take place. That's where our plays, some of your assemblies take place in their presentations, concerts, a lot of choir concerts, um, music concerts from the elementary students. So, you know, in that space, it should really be designed as a performance space, and right now, it, it really isn't. Our buildings are separate. We have a K2, you know, pre-K2 building and a 3-6 building. And so just in ease of the community having separate buildings like that, if you have children that are at different ages, you already have to go to multiple buildings just to drop them off, pick them up. A lot of the time when we get to school, we're really close to being late because my mom had to go to the south school and then drop me off at the north school and then drop my sister off at the high school. You know, it's been over 56 years since we've opened a new facility at Ithaca. Um, the building that we're in right now um, opened in 1965 along with South Elementary. Um, you know, these buildings have done well, um, but it is, it is time to invest um, in some new facilities.